Good morning. Good morning. A delight to be with you in church today. As you can tell, I got a little scratchy throat. So I was very happy that we, I chose divine service setting four because there's no singing parts in the liturgy. So the intro, when we get there, we will speak that uh, responsibly uh, in a few moments at the beginning of our service. Um, otherwise, uh, a busy week coming up. School starts on Tuesday uh, for Sibley East and for us here at Emmanuel. <coughs> We will be having opening worship, chapel service Tuesday morning at 8.30. You're invited to come and uh, share with the students on their first day of school. Uh, we'd love to have you. Uh, otherwise, uh, please read through uh, your announcements. Uh, next week, we go back to Bible class and Sunday school. So rally Sunday next week. We install teachers next week. It's going to be a great Sunday, so uh, don't miss out on that. Otherwise, our order of worship is divine service setting four, and our first hymn uh, is 797, Praise the Almighty, uh, Blessings as membership.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue as we speak responsibly the intro. Make me understand the way of your precepts. And I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me. And graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your just decrees before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I will run in the way of your commandments. When you enlarge my heart. Glory be to the Father. Make me understand the way of your precepts. And I will meditate on your wondrous works. Merciful Lord, you did not spare your only Son, but delivered him up for us all. Grant us courage and strength to take up the cross and follow him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 13th Sunday after Pentecost is from Deuteronomy chapter 30. See, I have set before you today life and good, 
death, and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away, and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from the book of Philemon. Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother. To Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and Aphia, our sister, and Acrippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers, because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus and all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Accordingly, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake I prefer to appeal to you. I, Paul, an old man and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be compulsion, but of your own free will. For this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. If he has wronged you at all or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it, to say nothing of your owing me even for your own self. Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand as we sing the Alleluia, the verse, and hear the gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now great crowds accompanied Jesus, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 men to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? 
And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is of no use either for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown away. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God of the Son of God, God and His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us stand. seated for our next hymn, 713. From God can nothing move me, 713.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the, the world today doesn't like extremes or, or extremists, right? When it comes to the weather, right, we don't want it too hot and we don't want it too cold. We don't like the extremes. Yeah, when it comes to politics, electability means neither being too far left or too far right. And when it comes to school and our children, right, give them some homework, but don't give them too much homework. And, and at work, right, make my job challenging, but don't make it too challenging. And then in matters of faith, maybe especially in matters of faith, don't be too much of a zealot, right? Don't go too far to one side or too far to the other side. The middle's better. Because in the middle, right, you offend less people. You think both and and not either or. Not one truth, but many truths. Not one ways, but many ways. Not right or wrong. It just depends. That's the way to go. Well, according to the wisdom of the world, that is. And truthfully, right, we like being in the middle too. We like to be liked and we don't like offending anyone. It's comfortable. It's safe. Make my faith demanding, but not too demanding. Yes, need commitment, but not too much commitment. Yes, I'll be forgiving, but not too forgiving. And pastor, be relevant, but don't hit too close to home. Right? Don't ask too much of me, but, you know, don't ask too little. Care, but don't pry. Need me, but just not too much. Which is why today's gospel reading is, is difficult for us to hear. Because that type of lukewarm Christianity is, is rejected by Jesus. According to his words, there is no middle ground. You either are or you aren't. You're in or you're out. You're in him or you're not. The same distinction Moses put before the people in our reading from Deuteronomy today, right? Just before they were to enter the promised land, right? What's it going to be? Life or death? Blessing or curse? One God or many gods? Well, you know the story, right? The people said one thing, but, but then life happened. They found out it wasn't so easy. And so they settled for the mushy middle. How often does that happen to us? Truth is, we're the same as they were then. They're the same as we are now. Right? When you were confirmed or joined the church in some way, you said you would remain faithful. You promised that you would, even if it cost your life. I have no doubt you meant it, as I did when I spoke those words. And, and then, like Old Testament Israel, life happens. We find it's harder than we thought. It's harder than we thought to, to put God before my family. It's harder than we think to stand firm and to not cave in, to speak and to not just go along with the world's latest truth. It's even harder to put what he wants before what I want. The desires of the flesh we like so much. It's hard to continue to read, learn, mark, inwardly digest, pray, and trust. We don't want the crosses he gives us. The, the cost is greater than I thought. The commitment's tougher. That kind of life, it just seems so impossible. So some, at, at that point, they give up and they go to the opposite extreme, which is what we sometimes call cheap grace, right? Which is to say, well, I can't do it and because it doesn't matter because I know Jesus will forgive me anyway, right? Which is to use God's lavish mercy and love just as an excuse, an excuse for being lazy, an excuse for, for sin, 
an excuse for being a Christian in name only. And yet, yet we know that's not right either. That's not the way it should be. And so, not being able to do the one and knowing we shouldn't do the other, we settle into the mushy middle where we simply become anonymous Christians, bored Christians, unsalty Christians, which is just how Satan likes it. Jesus knows the danger of the mushy middle ground and how deadly it is both for us and for those around us, underestimating the power of sin and the deadly mishmash of truth and error. So what are we to do? We can't do the one. We shouldn't do the others. How then do we live as Christians? How then do we live as disciples? Well, the answer is not to live at one extreme or the other, but, or to mash them together in the middle, but to live in both extremes at the same time. It's something quite different than the middle, which tones down or dilutes both the law of God, right? His demands for us, and it dilutes the gospel of God, his lavish love and mercy for us and stirs them into a mishmash of lukewarm, unrecognizable Christianity, which is really no Christianity at all. Instead, to live at both extremes is to neither tone down or to tame either the law or the gospel, but keeps them both in their strength and in their truth and in their purity. To live in the extreme of the law, which demands everything from us, and to live in the extreme of the gospel, which demands nothing from us. To live in the extreme of the law, which crushes us and brings us despair on our own efforts. And to live in the extreme of the gospel, which gives us life, hope, and the forgiveness we need. Or, in other words, to be a Christian takes everything and it takes nothing and where we see this truth most vividly displayed is there on the cross the cross which cost Jesus everything Jesus the one who counted the cost to build that tower we heard about in the gospel reading to build that fortress his refuge the church the one who came to pay the cost in our place, leaving his throne in heaven, being born of a virgin, being despised and rejected by men, then drinking the cup of God's wrath against our sin and dying our death. He's the king who came to battle the armies of the prince of this world, asking not for peace, but warring against them, Winning the fight we could not win. He is the one who loved us more than his own life. And so gave his life that we might live. And his, it is finished on the cross, indicated that it was. It is finished. All that is necessary, all that was demanded, done. The law fulfilled. Our sin atoned for. Our debt paid our victory won. And what cost him everything? Cost us nothing. And necessarily so. For if there was something that we still would have to do, something we still would have to pay, something we have to supply, something we need to finish, then it was not finished on the cross. And we were still under the demands of the law, still under the condemnation of sin, still under the curse of death then Jesus would only be a part-time Savior. And guess where we'd be once again? Back in the mushy middle. And that just will not do. Because it is finished. We have been saved. We have a Savior. A Savior again to whom this morning we confessed, all right, Lord, I can't do it. 
I, I can't be your disciple. I haven't done it. Death and resurrection. That's what awaits. I cannot do it, Lord, on my own. But how great is his love for us. How great is his love for you. When we gather and ask him for his forgiveness. We hear those beautiful words. I forgive you all your sins. I forgive you for what you cannot be. It's not too much for me. You see, that's the key. Discipleship isn't something we choose or do. It's a gift. A gift of forgiveness. A life we're born again, born from above, from Adam and Eve to Abraham and Moses to David to the apostles to you and to me today. Right? All have sinned, not one excluded. Fall short of the glory of God so we cannot be his disciple. We are justified by grace as a gift, given what we cannot do or be through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, Jesus wants all of you, not just part of you, not just the church part, not just the weekend part, not just the morning devotion part, the spare time part, or the part of your life you want to give him. He wants all of you all the time. And so he gave himself for all of you, that all of you be forgiven. That through his death and his resurrection, you be salty once again. Not reformed, but recreated. Made new. Taken back to the beginning. Taken back to Edom. Just as if all that Satan and sin and rebellion and, and that death stuff never happened at all. That's how great his love is for you. That's how great his death is for you. That's how great his baptism for you, where he gives it all to you. His forgiveness, his life, his salvation, all that you need. Nothing is held back because the Jesus who wants all of you gives himself all of himself to you. you see, there's no partial gifts with him. No, he, he is all for you. Even also to the eating and drinking of his body and blood when we gather here at his altar. The life to strengthen, to give you the forgiveness that it would be multiplied unto you. That you may not be all that you can be, but that you can be all that he is. Being the Christian, he has made you by his blood. So don't try to soften those words of Jesus that we hear today. And say, oh, this, but, but they mean that. No. They're hard words. They're hard words because they're meant to crush us, to, to kill us. So that Jesus can raise us to new life. But that's the only way to be his disciple. And it won't be easy. There's tough places in this world. There's tough places where you are right now. Maybe like Onesimus we heard about today in that second reading. You're, you feel like running away from the people and the places God has put you. But what did Paul do to his servant? He sent him back. Sent him back. Because he was to follow Jesus, to love and to serve and to forgive. And his returning also gave his master Philemon an opportunity to follow Jesus. To love and to forgive as well. To live out his calling as a Christian as well. So where you are, it might not be an easy place. But... Whatever you're calling, wherever you're calling, know that your Savior, He's using those places. Not because you are able, but because He is able. Because He is working through you to love, to serve, to forgive, to care for others, to provide for others, all through you. And in that process, also giving you everything that you need. 
Because he knows what you need better than you know what you need. And he has promised to provide all that. So while those words today of Jesus may seem hard, I mean, who of us likes being told that we're not able to do something? They're also very comforting. Knowing that you do not have to live up to a certain standard to be here, to be Christ's, to be his disciple. You see, you're not here because you are able. You're here because he is able. Able to wash you. Able to feed you with his body and blood. Able to forgive you. Able to bless you. In the church that he built. In the war that he won. And the life that he now gives to you. Amen. And now may the peace of God, that peace that surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen. Continue with the prayer of the church. Let us stand as we pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh God, our King, you counted the terrible cost of our salvation and sent your Son to give his life on the cross. Inspire our hearts to trust fully in his sacrificial victory that we would follow in his way through death and into eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Divine Shepherd, you give life to your church through your holy word. Grant your people always to walk in your way and receive your blessings as they serve you in this world and the life to come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Good Lord, preserve us from the ways of the wicked and prosper us in your paths. We commend to you all who bear office in our land and ask you to make them a blessing to those they serve. Grant to us every joy in the calling you have given to us that we might render service to you in our works of love toward our neighbor. Remember those in need of honest labor and daily bread and give them gainful employment according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, give the strength of the Spirit to all who are suffering or are in any kind of need. We pray especially this day for Verona, Dave, Reuben, B, Marin, Greg, Jim, Steve, Cassidy, Ray, Marlene, Harlan, and Donna. We pray that they may all have the courage and will to take up their crosses and follow the Savior through the suffering into joys of life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we lift before you this day uh, Shirley Kranz and Joanne Eager at the death of their brother Sylvan. We thank you for calling him to faith in your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you have set before us life and death, blessing and curse in your holy word. And now at the altar, through his own word, your son sets before us his own body and blood. Grant that all who receive the sacrament today might do so with prepared and penitent hearts, rejoicing in your gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation for the sake of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, from all temptation and grant us faith, that we may rest all our prayers and the desires of our hearts in your merciful arms. For the sake of your Jesus, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated now as we gather our offerings to the Lord. <clears throat>
We continue with the preface as we prepare to come to the Lord's table this day. Let us stand together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We continue with. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. May be seated for our closing hymn, 783. Take my life and let it be 783. 